Okay. Share the document link in chat. All right, welcome to scale. Um, please enter yourself as, as an attendee. Um, David and Jen, yeah, that's all we have today. Yeah, uh, please add yourself. I, I do say this every time, but it is important just because of, you know, we, we do have varying att attendance in some of these calls, but it's, but I want to make sure that it's always reflected here. Okay. Um, so I have two things for today. I was hoping Marcelo would be here, but that's okay. He's not, but here's um, two PRs that um, were open. Um, so both Marcelo and I were looking at this, trying to figure out what's going on with this periodic job. Um, we have two different takes on this. Um, uh, I can start with mine and maybe yeah, Marcelo will join and talk a little bit about kind of what he's been looking at. So I, I was doing some testing locally. Um, and I, I have some looking at some blogs and stuff and trying to figure out what's going on. Um, one of the things that I was focusing on is this this range selector um, piece, which is the um, which is actually this piece of code right here, like this um, bracket um, and then a, a duration um, right after um, right after the metric. And what I what I've seen and what I've been reading about is that this this has an effect on you know the data that we observe and this, this blog was talking about it and how it, it affects sort of the, um, what you see, like the, we can see like a lot in this graph, we can see like it's the peaks and values are much sharper. Like the, the duration of data, like when it's turns it into a, uh, like a range vector, it's uh, the duration is, it's much shorter. So the, um, the change in data is, um, is much sharper. Um, and, uh, I, plug this into um, the um, like uh, the Prometheus you know we, we have running this locally and I did a 20 um, a 20 VM test and I saw totally different values um, based on the duration and so I looked at our test our you test usually runs in like a one to two minute range somewhere in there um, and the it varied um, significantly here is the two metrics I posted. So this was with a five minute range vector. I see 22. I expect, so I did 20. So I mean, I expect it to be, you know, right around 20. I set it to two minutes. Uh, I see 26. Set it to one minute. I see 40. And this is the exact same test. I mean, you can see the line just kind of shrinks, but the values change tremendously. Um, so my thought was that, okay, this could be affecting how we're reading the data, especially if we're looking at thresholds. Um, we probably want this to be consistent. Uh, otherwise, I don't think we're gonna get the right numbers here. So um, I was thinking that this this needs to be set to something consistently. I said five minutes seemed to be the, stabilize the value quite a bit. Um, 10 minutes basically brought this down to like 21, which, you know, I don't know, it didn't seem like it did much more. So I was kind of settled at five minutes. Um, so that's what this does. And um, I, I wanna try and see if this has any effect. This is, what, this is one of the theories going on um, that, that could be affecting this job. So I, I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts, but that's, that's, this could be it, but I'm not, I'm not sure again until I wanna see it run just to see for sure. Yeah, so just to clarify, the only change you are proposing here is changing the um, the number, like the the time value in that bracket at the end of the. Uh, it's it's two summer. things. It's actually so it's it is that it's hard coding that value. It's also um, I what I added is an offset to um, offset just kind of moves us back in time. So all I want to do is like I I want to go back to I want to start the test like when we get the data like right here like because there's that time we have where we sleep yep. in between here so i just basically set it the current time that it looks at when it starts looking back as the moment it ends so that's all i do with the offset just another thing in case there's an inaccuracy there because we oh, don't want to gather data anyway after after this point sure. so it's useless so what you're doing is the offset is taking us to the very end of the test. Yeah. Whereas, and then from there, we're looking consistently at five minutes interval backwards. 
Yeah. Um, okay. That's, I mean, I understand what you're doing. I'm still confused on how Prometheus has somehow, <laughs> I guess, so the sum and the increase there, I would expect, given a time interval that we're getting the sum of everything that has occurred during that time period. Uh, so the increase is supposed to be a count starting, you know, five minutes back and we're summing that. I, it's just odd that we get different behaviors. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Two minutes. Yeah. Like, I, I have no idea. One one minute, like this is this is the the part that concerned me the most is like, uh, yeah. One except the only thing that I thought about that I still is not clear to me is like maybe there are two crate crate requests happening because like this is a perfect forty. So you know, maybe we're summarizing. Maybe it's it's summarizing like the increase and it's we're actually at forty. I don't know. I don't know what to make of this. But to me, I only created twenty things. I expect twenty requests. So. I know this seems like the most correct or closest to the correct value. So I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of kind of strange. But I don't know that that's was that was the, the theory that I have and maybe like it could stabilize it. The other thing is like just given that what's kind of scary is like if if we're getting different values for these, um, it'll be impossible to do thresholds if we can't have a consistent measurement backwards. So I think regardless, we need to do this to something, something we consider to be reasonable. So yeah, to measure, but I don't know what it is. I think five might just be something we can start with. Um, but I, I think so, did, one go ahead, Jed, or Marcella. Yeah. Um, if we want to, you know, to get the exactly interval that we run the test, I think maybe we should use query range. So because it, it, you can put the start and the end, and then you be sure that you collect, you know, you, you, you're not doing like, a, you know, five minutes ago or one hour ago is will be exactly the time that the test executed. Yeah, but like, so this is my concern. <clears throat> Marcelo was like, when I look at this and I look at this graph, like, uh, create like if i say what this if we have this range vector that's a one minute like there's no value for this over here like we get nothing like there's no metric there's no create requests if we gather here here anywhere over here and the test is running here like create is done here and like so it has to be like right when create is is done like we is when not necessarily when the test is run it like it's when create is like that's why i think that's my concern like with this value being too sharp like we're gonna miss this. I like. I don't know if we're gonna be able to accurately get this. If you use the curve range, it should return all the points in the interval. First. What is it? Cur current range. Yeah. So I now we're using Prometheus. Prometheus. We are using Prometheus query. Yeah. There is the query range. It's when you define. Yeah. So you define like an interval, but it's not the interval in the curve here. Okay. So it's the interval, and the query here will actually define the the you know you aggregate one point in it. Yeah. But the the query range will return all the all you know it's like doing this query multiple times in this range of time. You know, it's it's basically what's this uh, graph in Prometheus doing, but it. Yeah, you are saying that sometimes it's missing some point. Well, you see here on the graph, like if I, I mean, I can run this over here. Uh, I, I don't actually, I'm not set up to do it, but um, the, if, if you look, if I were like, I have my, I mean, you can see that how tiny this is, like this line, mm -hmm. this line stops right here. I get, there's no data here. Like there's no, there's no creates that, or that it gathers. Um, over here, like like if I were to look at the value, there would be nothing. Here, you know, like there's a larger period of time, and you know, here it's over whatever five minutes or so that we we'll have this aggregated value that we can capture. 
yeah, like this is our test. Usually that's like our test time, two minutes or so, like we're concluding. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't. So, I mean, we could do that, what you're suggesting, if it gives us like all the values. I mean, and then what we do is we just, um, I mean, I don't expect this to change. Like it should just be like, we're doing 40 crate requests, right? Like, it's not like we're doing one, two, three, like we're just, it should just be 40. Well, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just the saying that I don't know. I don't, I mean, we have to look at the data, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like I, we can look at it, but I mean, I think um, but it, this, this you know, might not be a bad got, way to at least give us an estimate though. You, you got 40 in this timestamp. You know, if we have this five minutes, it it looks like, for example, here is the what actually happened, isn't it? The twelve, twenty something, you got forty crates. The other ones that actually make the line longer, it's misleading. Then, isn't it? Because you are not doing forty, you know, forty crates many times, many different minutes. I'm not sure I understand. Like you're trying to, so you're trying to try and explain the difference. Yeah, like this, what, graph, this graph show what the reality is. You know, it's, you do 40 here and then you don't do great anymore. Right. So, so is, does, it, are there two, are there two, for a pod when it's a create request, are there two post requests? I didn't think so, I think there's one. Like that's what's odd about this. Why? Why would? Why is there two? Like this shouldn't be forty. That's why I don't. I, oh, I don't understand this value. Why it's forty here? Yeah, it I don't know why it's forty. Did you? How many pods did you create? How many VMs did you? Twenty. Create? Just twenty. Okay, so it's it's well, it creates two pods, isn't it? Uh, two pods. Or, okay, so this is... I don't think so. Because it has like the... the oh, no, it's only one pod, yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, I don't know why it's double here. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure how to, what to make it exactly of this number, but I don't know. This is the closest that... I don't know. I just, I don't want to fit the data if it's not, you know, the reality but i don't know why this it gets down like this is the number what i expect you know this is just closer to 20 it's about what i expect yeah okay well i mean i guess how about um what's the thing you call it? it's a it's what's the thing you said that that look that shows all the data points marcelo it's like a, a query something yes the, the, the query range um but it's it should, when you do Prometheus, it should do, show something similar. Um, you know, if you watch Prometheus and just put this query there and it's possible to define an interval, you know, less time, for example, interval that you are. Um, basically, query, the query range, you can define a specific interval instead of being the, like the current time less, 10 minutes ago, you know, we can just say, oh, between this, these two times here. So it's, yeah. but it should I, be, it should show something similar what you're saying here. It's just more flexible to query things that you run before. So just that. Yeah, so how, how about this? I, I'm gonna look at the query range. I wanna see the exact data that it's getting um, just to see, and, and just to see what, it, what else you can find about this. And, so if you go to, you know, into Prometheus, and instead of you plot it as a graph, and you see the table there, yeah. did you see it? Yeah, probably you cannot see it right now. Isn't it? Well, it's I can. Brain. If you want, I can do it. It'll just take me a minute to set it up. But I mean, what how about this? Like, I can do this in the background here. Well, why don't you talk about, you know, your change here real quick? And um, yeah. So what? Yeah, why don't you talk about what you're fixing here? Okay, so this one is actually, um, yeah, this was a request from Frederico before because the um, the performance jobs uh, in the pro job, 
it has a lot of logic inside, you know, to install Kubvert and run the jobs. And, and Federico said that we shouldn't have a lot of, you know, logic inside the pro jobs and actually have scripts for that. So this is, this is the, the work for that. So in the end is right now we have the uh, script in the hack uh, folder to run the performance job, but with the functional test, but I create a new, a new file that actually use the perf scale load generator to run the performance test. Okay. So because, uh, the plan, as we discussed before, is to replace the functional test with this tool, and and also automate, you know, um, an automated folder, which now it has a script to deploy the functional test in the in the cluster, but we need those to have some logic for run the performance test. So that's basically that what is just those scripts are doing and you shouldn't fail the test so i need to rerun the test there um, um uh, sorry marcelo i meant um i think i mm -hmm. pulled the wrong pr where's the it's this issue that you created I, i'm glad you talked about this one we i want to review this one but i think is this the the issue this was the one i meant to talk about was the um the missing pod delete and create events Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, sorry. You can finish, go ahead. You can finish up this one, and then we can go to the other one. Yeah. So I think I think now it's it will be also a question for the da V or David. I don't know what's the, <laughs> the the way that you like to pronounce your name. So uh, so da V, what's who is working now in the CICD seats? Because I I think Federico left, isn't it? He is gone. Um, I believe he's gone now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's either he's about to leave or he has left at Red Hat. So I cannot reach uh, him anymore right. in his lock. So uh, just to know, so we don't, need, don't need just to answer that now because it would be good to have someone that I can contact or, you know, because I think no one is reviewing this PR, my PR now anymore. Um, I know that Daniel Healer maybe, um, but I never talked to him, so. Daniel can help, I, I can help. I, I've just really backed up on reviews. Um, let's talk about it. What, what's going on you've missed or it, um, performance contest and script configuration. Uh, okay, this is what you were just talking about. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's this one and another one that adds the performance jobs there. And also it's fixed. So there is a performance jobs running in the cluster, performance cluster, but it's actually failing because it's using the wrong image. Um, I was using, you know, the bootstrap image, which doesn't have Golang, I didn't know, and I need to change the Golang image there. So there, well, if if someone can help that in the next days, it would be great. So we will have the performance jobs running, and then we can, you know, start to, to have, you know, data and analyzing results from the CI CD system. Yeah, this isn't very complicated what you're asking for. Uh, I don't see why this would be a problem to merge. It's all pretty isolated as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just no one is, I think no one is reviewing. So. <laughs> yeah, just the problem. Yeah. Right, right. So uh, just one thing that I notice is you create a separate automation script. This is a new file. So, um, yeah, I didn't want to mess with the other one before we decide to replace it. So that's why I create a new one. But we can okay. later think, think about if we should like uh, replace the, the functional test or not, or 
just leave there. We, we can discuss that later. What was the main um, thing that you need to add to the script that the other script did not have? Um, OK, so um, the first thing is uh, it's to install things in external cluster. It's the, the other ones, it's specific for, you know, for deploying, you know, uh, it's deploy Kubernetes, Kubernetes, it creates a cluster, you know, make cluster. I see. Yes, yeah, so you're, you're talking about external cluster. All right, got it. Yeah. Interesting. And is this environment, um, how does it get cleaned up? And I, I guess, are, who's maintaining it? Who's maintaining this environment? Is this something you maintain or? Um, yeah, I'm maintaining it. However, that's why I need to sync with the guys. Because Federico was helping me to maintain that, but since he's, he left, I really want to get this the CICG guys engaged on that. So, okay, I'm not sure who. So I want I could review this, and I could even um, you know I could approve it and get it in. But I don't have a lot of uh, understanding of who will carry this forward and the team involved there. I would recommend uh, maybe syncing up a little bit with uh, Fabian to understand what the status of that team is at Red Hat, because it's primarily a Red Hat uh, sponsored effort, and try to make sure that you're involved with the right people uh, and that they're aware of what's going on. And I can help get the code through if we need help with that. But I want to make sure that the right people are aware of the change and have a chance to review it. And I don't know who those are right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I will try to talk with Fabian. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go to the other one, uh, the other um, issue you created here. So this is the uh, Marcel. I introduced these. Uh, these were the two issues that we were looking at um, to figure out the density test and what's going on. So, do you want to talk through this one? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh, Ryan started to do actually this analysis, which is very good. So thank you, Ryan, to actually, you know, checking those results, you know, <laughs> from the, the performance job that was running there and identify this issue. Um, it's basically for everyone that may be not aware of that is we run the performance job and sometimes some events is not being collected in this metric that it's REST client request with some metric that it's generated inside Kubevert. So it's, it's counting, for example, number of pods created, number of pods deleted, and other events as well. Um, I'm just focusing here actually in delete and create. And again, so it's sometimes it's missing, sometimes it's appears, and I was just trying to understand, you know, and I actually I did a workaround about that. It's not a fix, it's just a workaround, you know, to see the metrics, but it really needs further investigation for that. And maybe it's also good to, to see the V, you know, David uh, options here, uh, optional uh, thoughts here. Okay, so what's happening here is when I deploy Kubevert, using, for example, clusters, yeah, deploy or cluster sync command, uh, the, you know, the recently built Kubevert in the development uh, process. Uh, I run a performance test, grades, for example, 100 VMIs, and then I run auto tool, or doesn't, it doesn't need to be the, the perf scale all, all these two, but just go to Prometheus and check the metric. So if I check the metric, I don't see the deletes and create pod events, okay? It doesn't appear. However, if I create one VMI and delete one VMI, what I'm saying, warm up the cluster, you know, just make kubevert function. Um, and then after that, I create 100 VMIs and delete 100 VMIs. I see all the create and delete events in the metric. 
That's bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> what in the world? Yeah. So it's. I was thinking. I don't know what's happening. I have no idea. So synchronization. If it's something inside the code, or just Prometheus is not scrapping the metrics well, or something that David, you know, uh, Ryan was saying. If if Prometheus doesn't scrap the exactly right interval, does it? Well, is there any possibility to lose the data? You know, well, it's not that that the data should be there, but um, like, I mean, well, you have it in the graph here. Like, um, I mean, you have an increase. So, like, it would be like if, um, like, for example, if you were to scrape. Um, like if you were to take data from here, this point, if you can see my mouse, like right here, and mm -hmm. then like right here, like you have for this like yellow line, you'd have nothing. Like you'd miss all of this in the middle. Uh -huh. You see what I mean? Like right here and right here, you this, this it has a value here. It has no value here. And, and, and here. a specific time stamp is a point. So. But it, you can get the range. It, but it's not like, yeah, it's not like a, a scrape from Prometheus. I mean, like, um, uh, well, uh, it would be like, so like this value, this, um, um, like, as you can see in the graph, it's, it's changing, right? It's changing all the time. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's whenever, yeah, it's, it's sort of whenever you're yeah, looking at the data. Um, yeah. Well, so that value is changing over time because it's constantly right. doing the sum of a five minute interval. So we're seeing like the, uh, I can't quite see the timestamps at the bottom there. All right, let's see. Six oh, minutes. Okay. It's every 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's going to level out because for the duration of the test, nothing changes. And then it's going to start dropping off because when you look back to five minutes, uh, there's less and less results until it, it's gone. So I understand it makes sense. The graph makes sense to me. What doesn't make sense to me is, Marcella, are you saying that you don't get those results unless you create a VMI to kind of like <laughs> warm up? <laughs> whatever uh, Prometheus scraping is it makes zero. I don't even have a language to describe what you just. <laughs> <laughs> it's super weird. I understand. So, but it's something that I was trying to see why those matters were not appearing, you know, in the, in their, the jobs that we have there. And after doing a lot of, you know, try and test, I realized that it was because I was, you know, just after deploying kubevirt, because you know, if I, I if I have kubevirt running there, I run one test, all the other subsequent tests appears the metrics, and it was buzzing me, you know, and when and then I saw that, so I I also think that I I, I also thought that maybe it's some synchronization, and then I left it waiting for twelve uh, more than twenty minutes. And it still had the same problem. So it's, it's because the entry doesn't exist yet in the time series database. And you primed it by creating a VMI. I bet that's what it is. It doesn't exist when you look back at the beginning. Uh, so at the start of the interval, that create pod doesn't exist, actually. So it's not being summed. But once you create a VMI, and then you go back to a point where that entry does exist in the time series database, then it starts summing it. That's so crazy. Okay, oh. this makes sense. So you actually do have to prime in order to get those entries in the time series database to ensure that, I wonder if that's the entire problem we've been having. Yeah, because it's comparing over time, right? So we need to, I see what you're saying. We, so you so we need, back, we need yeah. to, something to compare against, the starting point. Right, if you don't have anything in the entry to compare against, then it just returns something you don't expect. Mm, I think that I saw so someone weird. comment about that before. I don't remember exactly it was it was like a zero metric yes, me to zero metric. That's precisely what is occurring here. That's gotta be it. That's gotta be the explanation for everything. 
so we came to forgot about that yeah create a vmi at the beginning of the density test ensure that that gets scraped uh delete it and then uh we know only to collect after that point because the entries existed yeah in the in the script that i <laughs> in the new test uh, i'm doing that and wow. Um, in the, the, the script that I propose. So um, that explains what you're doing, Ryan, as well. Uh, some of the inconsistencies there. So for our density test, we need. It's good that you went ahead and added the uh, perf audit to the GoLang logic, because we're going to have to do a precondition there to prime Prometheus in order to look back accurately at uh, the results. So the increase expects that there was at least one entry that existed when we yeah. look back in time. Otherwise, I don't. That's got to be explaining the inconsistencies we're seeing. It, it takes totally make makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I think I will also have a look on that. Maybe write something here in this issue. Or also, please feel free, guys. You're right here also. This it's yeah, yeah, yeah. a good day, you know, point. Yeah. Did you write a patch for this already, Marcelo? Um it's I just update the new for the new task, not the the, okay. the the one that you are working Yeah, I think I think we do exactly what David just said. Like we just have the presentation, create one VM and delete it. And that's it. And that should that should give us yeah, I mean that should tell us what you know how, how and that will give us, I think, what we're looking for here. Yeah, I think okay. that's it. It's just a few line change here. It's a, a little bit of a timing issue. So we have to start that VMI and delete it. Uh, then we have to start the, the range that we use to calculate how far to look back needs to occur after, after, yeah. after that. And after we're sure that that result has been scraped, too. So the, the entries have to exist. So maybe create a VMI, delete it, wait a minute use that as a starting point for our uh, um, the scraping interval and run the density test and use the end, um, wait a little bit and use the end one to make sure that we've given mm. it time for the, the scraping to occur. Yeah. yeah, the new test, I'm actually doing that. So maybe if you can, if you go to the script, uh, yeah. Yeah, you have it. Um... Yeah, the per scale, yeah. If you see here, if you audit two is, it's true, for example, if we're running that uh, line 63, yeah. So I kind of warm up when I say, so I run the, the perf test with uh, the warm up workload, which is just one, you know, one VMI create and delete one VMI. Then I sleep 30 seconds just to wait for Prometheus to scrape. And then I really run the actual test, so I have the start time uh, just after wow. that. Wow. <laughs> okay, we learned something. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's okay. We're uh, Marcelo, you how about so I want to how about I take this? I'm gonna put this like. I'm gonna mix this into this text and see how it affects it. So I kind of want to see this, and then and it should, and then if it works, um, I'll pull out you know all the other stuff if we don't need it that I haven't here, and I'll just you know I'll turn this PR into the the fix for for this. I'll just make it a precondition in the in the func test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I think it'll be good. Maybe it's a complement also just this logic that you are working on so yeah that's what i want to figure out i want to see because i, I do yeah. want to understand like if this is going to affect it so let's let's I, I'll, I'll do that today and see if what i'll put post more graphs when i come up with uh okay mm -hmm. cool okay that that was good that helps <laughs> explain from we, we are going to be like uh prometheus experts <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> we should start a prometheus consulting gig instead of doing all this Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, all right. Cool. That, that's good. All right. So we've got, we've got through those. Okay. So um, that we talked about this um, last time. This is, uh, I, I just wrote um, a little work in progress PR for um, what I'm hoping will 
we can turn into like some of like what Kubernetes has with their SLO document. Um, this just kind of, I most just have it as like a template and a description of our, the test that we want to do right now. Um, like, not, I don't think we'll have SLOs at least not for a little bit, but, um, so I just want to focus it on testing. So I described in here, um, you know, the, the test in our cell that we talked about, like first test, you know, what it does, what it measures, so you say what it does, what it measures, and then, um, potentially taking, you know, when we have these, I mean, you've already started on some of these. So once we, you know, have some of these, I think what we do is we just, you know, we have our periodic job. We take like an aggregate of results over a period of time. You know, we call that our threshold and then we make our thresholds, you know, here, like we, we record it here. It's kind of, a, um, you know, what we expect. Um, yeah, and, that, and that's kind of what I'm thinking we can go with this. And then we can over time expand this to do some, you know, stuff with the, you know, SLOs or whatever. Um, just to see how far we can we can take this. So, I see mm -hmm. two uh, steady take steady state test uh, paragraphs. Yeah, so I, I do I do like um, I talk about um, I just kind of introduce the test and then I talk about what it's going to measure. I do that for each of these. Oh, I see. I, I read this too quickly. Got it. Okay. Yeah, just it's just some description about them. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, so what I'll do with this, I'll, I'll post this as a um, as a patch, um, and you know, I'll tell you guys, and we can take it there from review. And Marcella, you have your document where you've written some thoughts. You know, if you have some other things that um, I couldn't get in your doc for some reason, but if you have other things that we want to have in here or things you want to change, that's you know, that's fine. I figured at least, you know, we'll start with testing and then we can, you know, like I said, we'll expand to include the you know, other things if you want from that document or things we want to take this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe since we cannot comment this here, maybe we can create a Google Doc, man, you know, and then we can interact. Yeah. Well, I, so what I want to do is if I, I'll post this as a, um, a pull request, if you want to comment oh, okay. on it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is just I haven't posted the pull request. I was I was gonna do it after this meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Good. Um. That was that topic, and then uh, we covered this one, right, Marcelo? Or does that mm -hmm. work for you? Okay. And then, so it's, oh wait, we did that one too. Okay. Cool. All right. I don't, I don't think we have any more topics. Left. Great. All right. I'll um I'll post this PR after this meeting and then um I think I'll be able to get this one the you know do some testing for this today. I think this this isn't too much work. So we'll let you guys know. I'm kind of excited to see what <laughs> the result of this is gonna be. I don't know get to the end of this hopefully. Okay. All right guys, thanks. Thanks for joining. Have a good day. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.